Now, when you're looking at a sound bar, you're really looking for one general thing, and that's to improve the overall sound quality that's coming from your standard TV speakers. So sound bars are able to really enhance your viewer experience, enhancing the sound that comes from your TV and getting an overall small footprint to do that. Maybe you don't have a, the space for a home theater, or maybe you don't want one. Sound bars are here to help you. What we have here today is the Blast sound bar from On, a Walmart brand. And this is not just any sound bar, but it's Adobe Atmos sound bar for $2.99. So how good could this be? Budget brand, budget sound bar? Let's take a listen. On is Walmart's budget brand. You can see On has TVs, small monitors, sound bars, headphones, and the sort. This is On's 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos sound bar. Now, I was curious, how good could this be being a budget brand, and how good could this be being only $2.99 from Walmart? So I picked one up for review. On the front side of the box, you're greeted with a picture of the soundbar itself, a few logos. On the back side, you have what they call the basics. It really boasts about their 820 watt peak, 204 watt RMS system built inside the soundbar itself. Offers you Apple AirPlay, Bluetooth, and wireless technology. And of course, you have your optical and aux inputs. In the middle is the specs, boasting a 5.1.2 channel system, seven internal speakers, two to five watts RMS with a max output of 820 at any given time. Of course, it's Dolby Atmos with Apple AirPlay, iOS 11.4 layer, of course, and it has Bluetooth. As well on the back side, has four HDMI inputs, one optical and one Ethernet port, as well as one USB and one auxiliary. So what's inside the box? It says there's a 42 inch soundbar in there, of course, with one wireless subwoofer, two power cables, one remote, one HDMI, one optical, one auxiliary, and a quick start guide. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. Starting off with the accessories box here. Inside the box here is the power cord, your ethernet cord. We have two AAA batteries. And also it looks like we have the subwoofer cord as well. There's your HDMI, looks to be six feet. Here's the remote, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Your instructions manual. and your optical cable. It also comes with some mounting brackets, so if you want to mount this on the wall, you have the supplies needed there. What's left in the box is the sound bar itself. Nicely packaged, protected, and wrapped. At the bottom of the box here, protected under this egg carton type crate, is the subwoofer itself. And this is where most of the weight comes from. Starting off the remote here, obviously being a budget brand and a relatively inexpensive sound bar, you're going to get a pretty lightweight, most, mostly plastic remote here. Feels great in the hand, not too big, but again, very light, very cheap. What you have here on the front is the power button at the top, the mute button as well. You have your click wheel, which will allow you to turn the track, turn the volume up, down, all that good stuff there, make inputs and selections. You have your volume button up and down, the left and right, your sub button up, sub button down at the top and the bottom, HDMI, Bluetooth, source input, and it looks like on the bottom left and the bottom right, they allow you to do some sort of EQing to get the sound that you like. And of course, you'll power it with your AAA batteries. All right, let's unwrap the sound bar here.
Now the package weighs about 50, 52 pounds total, and the weight's probably distributed between both the sound bar and the subwoofer itself. The sound bar felt to be around 20 or so pounds. And as you can see, you have a all plastic finish at the top as well as two speaker grills and a speaker grill, a mesh grill on the front there. They are different colors. It looks to be more of a gray on the front and the top on the mesh grill and then all black plastic around the exterior. On the top side, you're greeted with five rubberized buttons here. They are not LED lit. You have your power, your input selector, your volume up and down, as well as play and pause. But you won't be using this too often because you do have the remote supplied for you unless you just happen to use, lose it or if you uh, run out of battery power. <laughs> On the top side above the buttons is a small little setup guide. Shows you how to set up your network, your Wi-Fi, whether you're using Ethernet cords or using an actual Wi-Fi setup, it tells you how to do either or. Flipping it over on the bottom back side, you have two rubberized feet that'll protect it on whatever surface you're gonna be placing it on. You also have two mounting bracket holes so that you can mount this to a wall if you choose to. On the left side are the four HDMI's that you will be able to use to pass through video and audio to your television, which is 4K compatible. And then on the right side here is where you'll put all your inputs for sound, so your opticals, your ethernet, and so on. So now we have the subwoofer. No, not that subwoofer. This subwoofer. Now, nowhere in the on the box or on Walmart's website does it state what size driver is inside the subwoofer. It also doesn't tell its own power handling. I'm sure it may say in the manual, but let's open up and see if we can figure it out ourselves. So as you expect, like a traditional sound bar, there's really nothing on the top, the front, or the sides. But on the back side, you have the port itself, as well as the power, the power on and off switch, the pair button, which you'll use to connect to the sound bar, and then a status LED lets you know that it's on or off. On the bottom side of the subwoofer are more rubber feet to decouple it from the floor. And here, you have your plastic grill protecting the speaker. Now, don't be fooled. This grill is for a 10 inch speaker, but if you shine a flashlight into the grill, you can reveal the eight inch speaker underneath. One kind of funny thing I did find on the back side of the subwoofer, on its sticker here, is how much input the subwoofer is gonna take from your wall. Its max consumption is 108 watts. So that might tell you how powerful this is. <laughs> Setting up the blast sound bar is actually very simple and straightforward. With the supplied cables, it's easy to connect the sound bar to power as well as the subwoofer. Now, do want to note that there are two different types of power cables inside the box. One with a right angle and one with a straight angle. I recommend using the angled cable for the sound bar as it makes it much easier to tuck away the cables and make it look nice and neat. One really cool feature about the soundbar is when the soundbar is turned on, the subwoofer automatically comes on. When the soundbar is turned off, the subwoofer automatically turns off as well. I went ahead and plugged up my soundbar first and then proceeded to plug the subwoofer next. Now thank you to On for making this a feature. Once you have plugged in the soundbar and plugged in the subwoofer, they automatically pair by themselves, starting with a blinking light, and then it turns solid. Now this LED screen hidden behind the mesh grill tells you everything you need to know about what's going on in the sound bar. So right now you're seeing a blinking red light currently, that's telling you that it's not detecting any kind of signal. But from here, we can make our input selection. So we can switch from auxiliary, optical, USB, Bluetooth, or HDMI. This does support ARC, or audio return channel, meaning when the sound bar is off, it'll still transfer video and sound to the television. You can also use regular HDMI 1, 2, and 3. It has a volume meter as well, all the way down from zero, and let's see how far it can go up. like volume 40 is max. 
Not only can you control the volume of the overall sound bar, you can also, also change the subwoofer's performance from here too. So you can dial it down. Negative 10 is the lowest, zero is the middle, and assuming positive 10 is max. You can also do the same thing with the EQ here. You have treble controls, you have front left controls, center controls, front right. You also have the option to change the Atom speakers as well as the surround speakers, their volume level depending on your taste. You also have different modes, movie, music, and surround sound or standard. Now, one thing to note, all formats support 5.1.2 sound other than USB, aux, or optical. Those three inputs do not support Dolby Atmos, but anything HDMI will. So if you're listening to Bluetooth or Apple AirPlay, you will only get stereo sound with the subwoofer, of course, but you will not get Dolby Atmos unless you're using one of the HDMI inputs. Now, unfortunately, with the time of the day, I'm not able to give a really loud sound demo, but we'll give you something to listen to. Honestly, I was very skeptical when I was looking at this soundbar in Walmart, thinking $2.99 from a company that's not really known for quality products. How good could this be? So of course, as you see, I picked it up with my own money and here's my thoughts. After tuning it a little bit, playing with some of the sound settings, I give this overall a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Now it's a really good, really good soundbar for the money. You get Dolby Atmos, you get a wireless subwoofer, you get HDMIs, three of them, as including one that is ARC, you get optical, auxiliary, you get Bluetooth, and you get Apple AirPlay. All for $2.99, so I can't complain. But why 3.5 out of 5? Well, let's talk about the subwoofer. The subwoofer actually gets very loud but it doesn't necessarily sound that great with audio as far as music goes. Movies does very well, but regular music playback is a little bit muffled, a little bit bloated, and I actually had it down all the way to negative 10, and it was still too loud compared to the rest of the sound signature. Now what I will say that's good about the sound bar is actually the surround sound effects. That movie there was in Dolby Atmos, and I was able to hear the effects around me. Now this room isn't big whatsoever. This is a bedroom with about eight, maybe eight and a half feet of ceiling. And it sounded pretty good, pretty convincing. Even in the Walmart facility right there in the electronics store, their demo sounded very good. I was absolutely convinced that there were speakers behind me and above me. So all of the sound quality that comes out of here may not be good, but the effects are very, very good. And of course, that's helped by the two up firing speakers on the top, as well as the full length of the soundbar itself. Being so wide, you're able to get a convincing stereo image. So the subwoofer is probably its weak point. There's no bass coming out of the soundbar itself. Everything's coming out of that subwoofer. But overall, it's not a bad buy. $2.99, I think it's worth it. Are there better things out there? Of course, you can get a Vizio, you can get a Klipsch, you can get a, um, you can get a Sonos, whatever you wanna get, but they won't be anywhere near $2.99 for Dolby Atmos. So is this worth your money? Absolutely. It sounds good for most people, and again, 
When you get a soundbar, you're looking to upgrade your sound out of your TV speakers. You're not looking for a whole home theater experience, but the soundbar tries to give it to you. So for $2.99, it's worth the buy. Thank you everyone for watching my review of the On Blast sound bar from Walmart. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this sound bar and the company itself. Is it worth the 29 to you? Do you think it would sound good enough in maybe a bigger room? Let me know that in the comments down below. And if you're interested in a more in-depth sound review, let me know that in the comments below and I'll do another video on the sound quality. Other than that guys, leave me a comment, hit that like button while you're there, and subscribe if you're not already. We'll see you guys in the next video. K-Pace Guy out. Peace.